Welcome to the Amateur Sports Network. I'm Matias Bueno here at St. Fatel Mustangs football field where the Manitoba Fearless have a preview matchup this week against the Regina Riot for the first game of the playoffs for the WWCFL championship. Regina lost to Manitoba 34-9 in Regina at New Mosaic Stadium and the Fearless are going to look to duplicate that score in order for them to move on in the playoffs. Today I'll be interviewing defensive coordinator Brett McFarlane as well as starting running back Hallie Aggie. The Four Points by Sheraton, Winnipeg South. Conveniently located on South Pembina Highway near the Trans-Canada Bypass and one hour from the U.S. border crossing. Offering a saltwater pool, hot tub, 24-hour fitness center, restaurant, and lounge. One. Welcome to the Amateur Sports Network. I'm Matias Bono here with Hallie Eggie, running back of the Manitoba Fearless. Hallie, how exciting does it feel to be in the playoffs around this time of year? Uh, there's kind of a buzz in the locker room, honestly. Uh, the team's pretty excited. Um, they keep saying it's it's the first one that we've we've ever hosted, so it's it's kind of a big deal. It's uh, it's a really really big deal in football when you get home field advantage, especially uh, at this point of the year against uh, provincial rivals such as the Regina Riot. You guys beat them 34 to nine in their barn earlier at the beginning of the season. What is it going to take this time in order to duplicate that result? I mean, it's kind of nice that we get to sleep in our own beds and uh, we don't have that bus trip to go on. So, so I think that's kind of a good starting point for us um, to beat them. I mean, we just have to uh, execute our game plan. Uh, some things have changed, some things have stayed the same. So um, really, we just have to, to, everyone has to do their job, uh, execute and uh, uh, forget each play as it, as it happens, have a short memory. Can you speak to the connection that you have with your offensive line as a running back and how crucial that is in order for you to have the type of downhill running that you've had over the last few games? I mean, truthfully, like my old linemen, they're my sisters. They, we have quite a, quite a strong bond. Um, we do things outside of practice together. We, we text each other. We, it's, it's quite a strong bond. We gel really well together and it is really important because I have to know where they're going. They have to know where I'm going. Uh, just having each other's presence on the field, um, having that bond, it's, it's really important. What is one of the big mindsets that you guys are going to have going into this game, seeing as how the pressure may be on yourself to win, seeing as how you're the home team? And how do you kind of handle that mindset going into a game against a team with, such as Regina, who is going to have absolutely nothing to lose being on the road? We have nothing to lose either. If we lose, we're out, right? So uh, putting it all in the field, um, if we lose, there's nothing next week, right? So if we, if we win, there's a bye week and we get to rest up for two weeks. But um, really, that's the mindset we have to have going in. Leave it all in the field. Um, don't leave anything for the locker room. It's a very fair point here. And the Manitoba Fearless, having had many trips to the playoffs before, and however, the first one here hosted at Winnipeg at Eastside Eagles Field on Sunday, June the 9th at 12 p.m. at Eastside Eagles Field, the Manitoba Fearless will take on the Regina Riot for a winner takes all to move on to the next week as a bye to face an opponent from Alberta. One. Welcome to Amateur Sports TV. I'm Matias Bono here with Brett McFarlane, defensive coordinator of the Manitoba Fearless. Brett, what's the feeling around the locker room this weekend against Regina? Well, there's a lot of excitement to uh, be able to hold, host a home uh, playoff game and uh, it's something the girls have been working toward for the past uh, four or five years here. So, um, you know, it's here and they're excited and uh, they're uh, getting prepared, you know, getting prepared for the week, but uh, they'll be ready to go. This is your fourth year as defensive coordinator with the team and what yeah. kind of improvements have you seen over your course of time being with the Manitoba Fearless? Oh man, there's, there's been significant improvement. Um, you know, first off, just from a defensive perspective, bringing on coaches uh, that can uh, take over the position groups. Uh, last year, I uh, started off with a couple of uh, people that were helping out and then that transitioned into me doing it myself. Unfortunately, they couldn't commit. Uh, so now uh, this year having a full uh, defensive staff with uh, linebackers coach, defensive line coach, and uh, myself doing the defensive back stuff. Um, it's uh, it's been a great improvement, uh, and you know the girls have been uh, thriving through uh, the teaching that's uh, been occurring, and uh, they're doing a great job. So, what kind of improvements and what kind of impact would you say it has to have a fully loaded defensive coaching staff in order to get the players to play at the level that you know that they can? Well, the problem is, so if you don't have a full staff, um, you're limited to. Uh, your time and what you're able to do in practice. Uh, so a, a lot of it uh, is in 
you know, last year was a lot of trying to incorporate as many different um, methods of running drills and adapting and evolving drills to include all the position groups. Uh, but when you have a full staff, you can focus on all the, you know, details, fine details that uh, the, each position uh, demands. And, um, you know, so the, the difference now is that uh, you have a full, uh, complete uh, defense and, uh, you know, girls that uh, fully understand what they're doing. Um, and now that they've, the girls that have been here for the past three, four years, they progress through the system uh, and then they can help out the girls that uh, are new. Uh, we have a lot of new girls here this year as well. So uh, they help out with uh, the transition with those young girls as well. So you guys beat Regina 34 to nine in Regina yeah. earlier at the beginning of this season. What is kind of the mindset going forth into this game, seeing as how now you're the hosts and that game was at the very beginning of the season? Well, you know what, first off, uh, Regina is a very good football team and, and that game from just from my perspective as a coach here is uh, that could have been either way. Uh, there was multiple points in that game where Regina could have had the momentum or the, you know, could have had an interception here or there. Uh, There's multiple chances. So that, that score could have easily been the other way around. Um, so, uh, you know, having said that, uh, it is what it is. The score was what it was. And, um, you know, it was a good feeling for the girls. They never beat a Saskatchewan team before. So uh, that was a great goal for them to, uh, you know, finally uh, cross off the board, I guess, if you will. Uh, and um, now that we're hosting them at home, uh, you know, we're, we're sure not taking them lightly at all. Uh, they're going to be coming in here very upset because uh, that first uh, you know, game of the season they lost. So um, they're going to be coming in um, ready to go. And, uh, you know, we just got to be prepared and make sure that uh, everybody's on the same page and that everybody knows their assignments, the adjustments for this week, uh, and then execute the plan. What would you say is the most key thing going into this weekend in terms of your execution that is going to have to bring you guys to victory over Regina? Well, I think Regina, uh, the majority of the offense, there's a lot of movement to it. So uh, it's just a matter of having the girls understand uh, what they're doing uh, within uh, that movement within coverages and how we adapt and how we adjust to the movement that uh, Regina uses. Um, and then after, you know, at the end of the day, a play is a play. It's either a run or it's a, you know, it could be a jet or it could be a pass or a certain pass concept. So as long as, uh, you know, they get set, at the end of the day, the play is what play is. And then it's just a matter of having them have their eyes in the right spots and just fit to the spots they're supposed to be in. And um, that's essentially, you know, the game in itself. Manitoba Fearless hosts the Regina Riot on Sunday, June 9th at 12 p.m. at Eastside Eagles Field here in Winnipeg. It'll be a great matchup and surely one that people will want to tune into. I'm Matias Bueno from Winnipeg, Manitoba for the Amateur Sports Network.